Hello everyone. In this command modern operations tutorial video, we're going to be taking a look at modern SAM slash IADS. Now, what has really changed over the last 30, 40 years is that technology has gotten better, munitions have gotten stealthier, uh, aircraft have gotten stealthier, uh, the ability to target and reliably detect things has gotten better. It's just, it's unbelievable the change in technology in a relatively short period of time. Keep in mind, it's been a long time coming, but at the same time, it's just amazing what we can do now that we could never do in the past before. So in this scenario, I basically, this is a follow-up to the previous one with the legacy SAMs. We basically have gone ahead and set our island up just like we had before. We have all the different targets. Uh, we've added a nice little new item called Jammers which um, if you know the uh, Russian army loves their portable jammers, I guess the concept here is that if you're gonna be using UAV or something like that, surprise, you can't see the camera feed anymore because it's been jammed. It's also very effective against GPS signals, which are used in a lot of different types of precision guided munitions. I basically spread these guys around the island and made sure I turned them on this time. Our EW, we have significantly less early warning than we did last time. The reason is, is because these are all phased array radars. They have a spectacular capability to spot stealth targets. They have less range than some of the legacy systems, but they still at the same time are tremendously good at detecting. I've already preset them all up at good altitudes and good positions. I've checked the line of sight and everything like that. So now the only thing we need to worry about is the placement of SAMs. Now, what we could do in this scenario to make things interesting is, of course, we could set a bunch of, you know, American, British, French SAMs. But when I think SAMs, I usually think of the uh, Russia slash the former Soviet Union. Well, on account of the fact that, you know, our air power, I should say, the Western air power is very, very good. So they always were looking for cost effective in very, very awesome means to limit our ability to employ it, which is something we're going to simulate here. So what do we have as far as modern SAM systems? Now you can see the year here is 2020. I've given our opponents F-35s, F-22s, B-2s, F-117s, even though they're out of service. They have tornadoes, they have jammers, they have everything under the sun to hit us with. So we need to take that into account. Our biggest enemy in modern times is going to be the precision guided munition. You know, you have your joint standoff weapons. You have your JAAS, ASSMs. There we go. We have cruise missiles. We have everything along those lines. Now we have the hypersonic weapons and we have the EMP weapons. So our focus for us is not so much to eliminate the carrier. It'd be nice if we could eliminate the guy who actually carries the missile, which we're going to try to do. But it's going to be more important that we mitigate the damage that those standoff weapons can cause. Keep in mind, if this were a scenario where everybody was mobile and not detected, it would be very different because then the enemy would have to come find us, in which case then we can attack his aircraft. So again, it's different times require different tactics. So anyway, let's go to town here. So first things first, let's go ahead and I'm just going to actually select this guy real quick, just to select everybody. Let's go ahead and bring up our strategic targets and go ahead and turn that on real quick. So they're the same as they were last time. So as usual, our most important priority targets are going to get the best protection as far as surface air missiles goes. So on this peninsula, I'm going to go ahead and throw up the nastiest of nasty SAMs that I can put, and that is going to be the S-400. There's a reason why they call this the Triumph. I'm going to go ahead and grab that, place that right there, and it's going to sit right there, kind of on the end of that little peninsula, and it is going to provide coverage of this size. We're going to try to launch at them as they leave the ground. Now I'm going to do something very scandalous, and I'm actually going to enable its search radar. You're probably sitting there going, why would you do that? Well, it's simple. The only way we're going to detect precision guided munitions is if we detect them by radar. If we detect them by vision, especially if it's night or cloudy, it's too late. They're going to hit us. That being said, an S-400 can get a lot of shots off at one time. So that S-400 will basically prevent the British from attacking anywhere on that side of the island. So we're just going to apply the same philosophy to some of our point targets as well. So let's go ahead and get ourselves, oh, let's see here, we have this little group down here. We'll go ahead and go on the top of a mountain, about 459 feet. We'll get ourselves one of the older S-300s. There's different flavors of S-300s. You have the very, very old one. You have the PT, you have the P, you have the PT-1. You have the PM, just think the M for modernized. And you have the PMU, which is a very, very, very nice version. And of course, you have the PS, which is an extended range version as well. So uh, what version would we like to use? Well, let's, get, let's go legacy here. Let's go legacy. Let's go down. Let's see here. We must have set the country to Russia. Uh, that way we're getting kind of the modern versions of everything. There we go. Let's see what we have here. SA-10, we have the PM, we have the PT-1. Let's see any SA-12s, but that's okay. The PS is obviously a very modernized version. All the SA-10s are kind of old at this point. So it's really the A or the B, what would you like? We'll grab a PT. And he's basically going to keep an eye on this side of the island. 
we'll go ahead and grab a PMU, find the tallest mountain that we can get ourselves on, stick it up in the tippy top right here. We're going to get a P, we're going to want, uh, PM's fine too, that'll work for me. Uh, which one? I want that one. We'll go up to the center of our island. This is a very large, very flat area, so it's a spectacular place to put a sand battery. We're going to go ahead and stick up an SA-12 here. This is uh, pretty effective. An SA-12, this is kind of a unique story where the SA-10 and 12 are actually developed in parallel with each other, but they almost ended up with the same system. Think of the SA-12 as like the mobile version. Think of the regular SA-10 as sort of the fixed sort of strategic version. So I'm going to have the mobile version protect us in the middle of our town here. I'm actually going to enable his battalion radar, which is, I know, very, very naughty. You should do that. But I'm going to do it anyway to give us a little bit more coverage there. Going up to the north side of things, again, they have to come via water, so all I have to do is protect the water. They should be able to get through, right? Right? So I'm going to go ahead and get myself an SA-10. We're going to get one of the older one SA-10s. I want a PS this time. Uh, that looks pretty good right there. And then I think the last place we really need to go, let me shut off Merge Simples for a second here so I can see what I'm doing. And let's actually turn everybody on. There we go. So it looks like we need something up here as well. This is a, again, there's a pretty tall mountain right here. I'm just going to go ahead and park him right on the top. I'm going to get one of the little S or, S, older S300, or newer S300s, I should say. I want the SA, yeah, there it is. The PM1 is the one I want. Go ahead and put him right there. I'm actually also going to activate his battalion radar because I want him to be able to spot anything that's coming in that's going to hit us. Okay. So that's it for the big, unbelievably long range weapons. So now what we want to do is concentrate on point defense. So there's a couple different point defense we have at our disposal with modern times. We have uh, the SA-15, which is, it's decent. Uh, we have the SA-19, not the best choice. Uh, we have the Pantsir, which I think is the SA-24, if I recall. Well, let's see here. Uh, SA-22, I take it back, which is a spectacular anti-position guided munition platform. So we're going to use a mix of those. Basically, the things that are really important, we're going to protect with the better system. So let me scoot down here. Uh, this is kind of, like I said, this is a Dublin, kind of a big deal. Go ahead and go ahead and place it so that it can target anybody who basically gets past the SA-21. Let's go ahead and grab that real quick. Okay, there's only two vehicles in this little tiny platoon here. I'm actually going to move him back a little bit because I want to make sure I can cover all this. That looks good right there. Um, let's go ahead and drop another one up here with our bunkers because remember we're dealing with PGMs now. So I'm going to put this one, this mountain right here. I think that'll give us good coverage. Eh, not the greatest coverage of that other bunker. I'm going to go ahead and place another one right here. There we go. Now we got good coverage there. Uh, looking up here, again, it's very difficult to protect that with a SAM to begin with. Uh, we have a military base. We'll come back with an SA-15 for that. Let's see, is there anybody else grouped together that we can protect? Okay, this looks pretty good. Go ahead and put him right here. Anybody who tries to fly over these hills are going to get a surprise. And that should do it. All right. So now for some of our point targets, which are a little more difficult to protect, I'm going to employ the SA-15. This is a very short range um, anti-basically uh, SAM system. You can see it kind of sitting right here. This is the SA-15E right here. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to park that, basically using that for my point defense, protect my refinery. I'm going to go ahead and stick it. Um, is there a safer spot to put them? This refinery is in a terrible spot. I'm going to go ahead and stick that up there. Uh, let's see, a naval dock. We should probably protect that. I'm going to go ahead and stick it so it's got decent view over right here. Let's see, it looks good, looks good. Oh, military base, got to protect that. I uh, see he's got a good field of view. We might want to add something that's got a little bit greater range, but we're going to go ahead and stick the SA-15 there anyway. We have our industrial plant. Stick that one right there. And of course, what do we have down here? We have our guy in our valley again, our industrial plant. If you remember before, we stuck the SA-8 up here on the hill. That's a great spot. I'm only going to add one little detail right here. I'm going to add myself an infrared guided missile right there as well. And now I'm feeling fairly confident. If the enemy's going to launch uh, cruise missiles, they're probably going to come up through this way. So it makes a lot of sense to give us a little bit more protection, kind of protecting that direction. So I'm going to go ahead and drop myself another S-300 down there. We'll take, uh, we'll do a 20 this time. And I'm feeling fairly confident. Okay. <laughs> Well, let's see how well this goes, right? Okay, so some of these guys have their battalion radars turned on. Again, I keep saying that it isn't necessarily a battalion radar. It can be different, like I said. I'm actually going to flip this guy's on as well. Usually I don't do this, but you kind of have to because you need to be able to spot incoming munitions soon. Keep in mind, a lot of these guys have cameras and stuff like that. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and double check to make sure my early warning radars are working correctly. I don't want to embarrass myself too, too much here. 
Uh, we want to do that. Go ahead and spacebar. Go ahead and check to make sure that's active. Remember, we have active jammers now. So that's going to make things even more interesting for our opponents. All right, let's watch what happens. Okay, so what do you think we spotted so far? Notice the jamming. Notice very, very aggressive jamming, by the way. Uh, let's see, we have a bunch of bogeys. We can't identify them. Look at all the targets we missed, by the way. All right, let's unpause. Notice I didn't change my WRA. You're probably sitting there going, why? <laughs> Look at it go. Pause. Ta-da. And here comes our precision guided munitions. Notice, while we were busy wasting an awful lot of ordnance on these guys who we could barely even hit, the precision guided ordnance showed up and started punching holes in our defense. Now notice, uh, we can barely make these guys out. Our S-400 is desperately trying to take shots at these guys. Meanwhile, the um, a Greyhound here, he's going to start engaging in about half a second as well. This platform loves killing PGMs. I almost feel bad having the S-400 wasting its shots at that distance, but it's just satisfying to slap all those aircraft out of the air, especially since most of them are stealth aircraft. I think I put him on the wrong side of this hill. Yeah, it looks like I did. Well, bummer. Look at how many SA... Oh, jeez, look how many I've gone through already. He's actually reloading right now. So if this were against a player, I would have already won because I ran him out of ammo. Isn't that interesting? But again, I wanted you guys to see how that affects things. And we're already starting to take damage. Our Greyhound, by the way, he's got his radar turned on, but he can't do anything because he just can't Lock it up. Ah, oh, the jamming is too effective. Don't you like PGMs? I'm actually going to turn this guy's radar on immediately because I do not trust what's going by me right this second. There we go. That's stuff we can engage. Oh, man, we're losing stuff like crazy. I just got about half of them. Oh, good. We got most of those. Just lost a bunch more. Uh oh, we got. Oh, there's even more. Ah, uh, that's a tour. You can go ahead and flip your radar anytime you like, Chief. Imagine how. Oh, geez, that jamming is so aggressive. Where's my other three? Hey, there you go. Alright. Uh, oh, he's trying. He's trying. <laughs> oh, those sounds. Oh, ow. Go ahead and activate these guys. I get the feeling they're going to get a lucky shot in a second. Apparently, I spawned in two there for some reason. My bad. Who's this? That's an SA-10. Keep in mind the SA-10 is a little out of date by now. Hey, my S-400 reloaded. <laughs> He's about to get a free shot. No, his radar got destroyed. <laughs> okay, so that was a little different. Now, I'm sure you're expecting me to slaughter all those stealth aircraft, but the fact of the matter is, if you combine stealth with jamming, it's an incredibly tough thing to beat, even against PGMs. Yes, you can jam for PGMs. So let's go ahead and take a look at losses and expenditures. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> look at that. Let's see expenditures here. Okay, all right, all right. Looks pretty good. And let's see, we got one B2, we got 
all the Raptors, we got all the F-35s, we got all the Tornadoes, and we got all the Typhoons. Total shots, eh, this was the secret weapon. All right, hopefully you found that video kind of interesting. If we were to do this in the middle of the desert, like, uh, for example, if you really want to see some flat, uh, let's see, I'm um, thinking, 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 thinking. Ah, here we go. If we wanted to do stuff over here in Iraq, this would be a very different scenario because there'd be nothing to hide behind. But the fact of the matter is the reason those penetrators were so effective was the fact there was just so many mountains for them to basically hide behind and break line of sight to our SAM systems. It was neat to see that the... Um, a couple arms did get through, which I thought was kind of neat. So anyway, uh, hopefully you found that interesting. Of course, in the real world, had the Americans lost that many, I should say the English, it doesn't matter, NATO, lost that many aircraft in a single mission, that would have been a nightmare. You're probably wondering why we only got a single B-2, by the way. B-2s are extra stealthy because they're so large. I know you're sitting there going, wait, what? Turns out if you have a smaller wavelength, it's harder to detect a bigger object. Interesting, I know. So anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. Uh, how could we make this better? Obviously, if we had two or three of the Triumphs just kind of along the coast here, that would have been no contest. But it's still kind of neat to see. Enjoy.